Thank you, Jeff. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the gift. Yeah, Jeff, your segue is so beautiful. It's so perfect. Like, end the waiting. And as you can see behind me, our, oh, this side, our theme today on the show is this moment is your miracle again. So this moment, ending the waiting. And um, we're going to dive into a topic that's very present for me right now. So it's, I'm a little excited to talk to you about it today and to have special guests Jenny and Greg Donner with me, who I'll introduce you to in just a moment. But um, yeah, we're going to be diving into people pleasing today, or rather the undoing of people pleasing. And we're going to use David's new book, This Moment is Your Miracle, to take a deeper look at that. So join me this morning on The Gift as we take a look, good long look, at the dismantling of people pleasing. Good morning again, everyone. I'm here with Jenny and Greg Donner, who I'd love to introduce you to. Thank you so much for joining me. I've got Jenny here in the studio with me, QDS, and Greg's joining us from Camus. Hi, Greg. Hi, Greg. Hey, Kristen. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Great to be here. Thank you. Yeah, it was wonderful because this week has been such a swirl with this upcoming book. Um, as maybe you've seen in that email you received in your inbox this morning, um, this book is now available for pre-order on Amazon and a number of other places. So there was a strong swirl behind that this week. And um, so I knew that that was what this show would be about. And I didn't know quite how it would unfold. But um, just this morning, I was reminded it always has to be about the present healing. That's what's so inspiring to share about and to hear about, actually. So um, Greg had sent me a part of um, a chapter that, or the chapter that uh, the folks in Camus just had a look at, people pleasing, from people pleasing to true empathy. And so that's what it was. It just dropped in. It was like, well, let's talk about that. So. Yeah. Yeah, people pleasing is, is a great topic to talk about, I feel, because it's um, so common. It's, uh, yeah, it's one of the biggest defense mechanisms that the mind uses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to hear more about that, actually, like to just dive right into the content of this, the heart of the book, what you're going to be able to experience as you open this book. And um, yeah, hopefully do it through people pleasing here. So I would actually love to know, Jenny, can you tell us a little bit more about what is people pleasing? Like, how does this show up in our awareness? What are we on the lookout for in our everyday life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, I think people pleasing is like like I said one of the biggest defense mechanism against our an experience of our true self, an experience of peace, um, because it's um, it's so I don't know. It seems like the mind uses it from you know from we are born. We learn to people please. We learn to we're going to behave basically. Our parents tell us to behave. And it's all about the external world. Please it and be a good girl, a good boy, and all of that. It's so much people pleasing. And um, yeah, I think in the book, um, there is, um, we talk about the lethal poison analogy, which is, comes from guilt. And it's this uh, guilt in the mind that makes us create this whole world and and it's um, it's like David calls this analogy the lethal poison analogy because it's like the guilt is like if you would take lethal poison like really concentrated you would feel it you would and and the, if you take the guilt as it is, you would feel it and you would just drop it. You would not want it. But when you uh, dilute the guilt, when you, so the lethal poison, if you put it in the ocean and then take a cup and drink it, you don't hardly notice the poison. You don't notice the guilt. And so the people pleasing is like that. It's, it's diluted guilt, so you don't notice its guilt. You think it's nice, you're a nice 
you know, a nice surface, but it covers over this huge guilt in the mind. So, mm. yeah. Wow. Yeah, you're so right. Like we're conditioned from birth, basically. Mm-hmm. Like this is this is a good thing. Like this is you being kind and nice person, as mm. you said. And certainly, the phrase I grew up with, if you don't have any, was if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything mm. at all. Mm. And so it's like. Boom, it's this mechanism to repress. Yeah. And then the life becomes one of compromise, actually, where you're not actually in touch with anything that's really going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up with kids are to be seen but not heard, you know. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> Shut up <laughs> and be nice. <laughs> so, yeah, it's huge. Yeah, I can speak to that, too. Um, just share about um, the, and just even looking at this sort of being nice and you know of course we want to be nice people we want to be good people and and then the ego kind of gets in there especially on the spiritual path and there can be a real conflict with that um attempt to you know to be spiritual to be nice because when it all comes down to it you know as we're learning i think even more and more and living closely with each other is that you know we have to speak our mind and um yeah it's uh for awareness and for bringing, bringing us to an authentic place in our heart. Um, and it's like every time something comes up, you know, that's like, feels like, oh, wow, that's going to hurt someone's feelings. Oh, that's going to rock the boat. Then, then, you know, we're going to, if we're self-conscious about that and worried about that, then, you know, that's, then, you know, that's, um, so yeah, this chapter is called yes, from people is called pleasing to uh, moving towards uh, true empathy, and um, there's a little section in there about true empathy and and false empathy when we're associating with someone's um, perceived uh, bad situation or they're sick. Um, you know, we're actually imposing a judgment on them that they're actually less off than we are. So it runs very deep, and underneath all that is is a really a, an unworthiness. Or what this chapter points out very deeply is that we actually have a desire to be a victim. And so, if we're doing false empathy, we're projecting it out there, seeing someone worse off than us. Um, it's actually a total denial of our own belief and desire that we want to be a victim, or that we are less than. Um, in that way. So it's, it's very deep. And um, in our exercise uh, at this uh, in Camus um, with the house here, um, you know, it became very clear that at the bottom of it was his desire to somehow play less than, sort of be out of the limelight and just sort of not rock the boat. And, you know, well, it feels more comfortable, you know, just sort of not speaking that thought. And it's just all it's just all repression and denial, and it just causes a mess. Um, and I think in the house, though, this is all very, very practical and very much happening every week, every day, where um, each of us gets a chance to just speak our mind, and it just feels so good. We feel really together, um, and, and that's true joining, and that's the result of not people-pleasing is... is is authentic relationships and true joining. So it's just happening here. It's, it's great to just be able to uh, have it applied directly, you know, in the moment every day and just to see the results. So it's really, it's really beautiful. We just watched this movie actually that chemist recommended called I'm not ready for Christmas. And it's, it's a similar movie to um, if you've seen liar liar with Jim Carrey, where he can't lie anymore. And that's, I mean, essentially, um, at least once we start, once I've started understanding that this mechanism is at play and it starts to become conscious, like that's almost the kick that I need is like, be truthful, like speak your truth, like your truth, speak what's on your heart. That's the only way to move through this. And so I was all inspired after watching that movie. And I love what you were saying there, Greg, and I was reading in... um, this moment is your miracle through this section about how this is going to dissolve worry and it's going to dissolve like the anxiety of what other people are going to think of what I have to say because my experience with just continuing to say what I need to say 
actually brings people closer or it brings me into a deeper relationship with the spirit because I can see that this has been so closely tied in with the idea of loss and it's funny just this morning actually we were in our morning meeting and somebody mentioned it not as loss but as the fear of loss so I was really inspired by that you're you get to move through the fear of what you think you're going to lose and then get to see mm. that it's really just the anticipation that's actually worse than going for it because the reflection that comes back is very healing. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we can, we can share about that, how, how people-pleasing ties into the, the fear of loss. Please. Like, how does that really work in the mind? But I think that it's like, you know, you... You people, please, because you're afraid to lose. Um, you're you're afraid to lose a friendship or a, you know something in the future, something in form. While when you don't people please, you are in alignment with your true self. You're connected to the Holy Spirit, and you don't really so much look outside, you know. But people pleasing is really like looking outside, and um, it's having people thoughts or world thoughts thinking about the external and the future. While when you don't people please, you're actually in the present moment and you, you, you don't really care, so to speak, about the external, you're in your experience. And from that, you're very authentic and your thoughts and your actions and your, your everything is in alignment. And that becomes like a beautiful, you're very, you become very um, attractive, I would say. People know where you're at. People know what, you know, what you're about. They don't get confused. A people pleaser is very confusing. Because <laughs> you don't know who they are. You just, you know. Oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, well, I'd love actually um, to just dive into this a little bit more with like, what are the cues you're looking for in your daily life? How do you know if you're a people pleaser? And I mean, mm -hmm. the answer I feel is, you know, by how you feel, like, oh, that didn't feel mm -hmm. right, or I'm piling up with commitments that I can't keep, or things like that. Yeah. Um, but just very practically, because that's what this book really is, either Jenny or Greg, whoever feels really sparked for the question. But um, yeah, what, what are the cues that you're looking for in your everyday life? And, and then how do you move through that? Right. Well, I think one thing is the suppressed rage that, that comes with it because you don't speak up, you don't share what you think. Instead, you keep it within, and then it will come out as a, an enraged you know, expression or come out where it's not supposed to come out to somebody else that's innocent. <laughs> you know, If you have held it within, it usually comes in the wrong place and the wrong time, and that's one, one, one of the cues. Um, and yeah, you just don't feel good. You don't feel connected. You don't feel happy. You feel isolated uh, um, because, yeah, because you have this inner, like the the inner life that is not coherent with the, what you express outwardly. Mm. Mm. So, Greg, I know. Yeah. Um, oh, go for it. Oh, go for it. Well, right after the exercise in the people-pleasing chapter, um, it's towards the end of the chapter, we have some tips. So we can just kind of highlight some of the tips in the book. Um, and the first tip is, is that when you're asked a question, um, that you don't have to respond immediately, you know, because the people-pleaser will say yes, you know, because of that desire to be liked. Um, so saying instead of responding immediately, especially if something, if you're just not really sure, you have to get in touch with that. Um, you pause and you just, you can actually say, I don't know. And um, I know Byron Katie also gave that advice as well. Um, so this space allows you to really feel clear about your answer um, and also actually see, start to see some of the ego motivations that are underneath there. Um, like being, wanting to be liked or wanting to fit in or um, not being different, you know? So, the other thing is, the second point, bullet point that we have for tips for undoing people pleasing is um, to uh, be prayerful about your commitments. And um, 
when, you know, I think this happens a lot in community where there's just, you know, the, when we say yes to something, it's a commitment and um, it's a very deep one. And you can also give yourself the space to uh, feel things out and look at your motivations for that commitment as well. Man, I almost got married um, before Jenny. I almost got married because of uh, because of that, and uh, the spirit wouldn't have that. So I, I just sort of had a dismantling in that whole process. So that's a big one. <laughs> um, yeah, and when you do, when you are prayerful in the commitment, and you you decide it's a yes, then then put your whole heart into it, and that's a really great way to wash away the ego motivations. Um, speak from your heart. That's the that's the third uh, bullet point there. Um, when you directly share your thoughts and feelings, notice any concerns about the other person's reactions. Um, and that ties in directly with what people think about me or what or wanting to be liked. Notice and allow your fears and thoughts to arise, such as fear of rejection um, when you need to speak from your heart. Um, hurting other people's feelings or being perceived as unkind. Again, that's a real big one. It's a big mask in the spiritual, you know, realm because, you know, there is an expectation and of course a goal to be kind, uh, but that's taken by the ego. That's like a massive cover over authentic communication. Um, yeah. And that's all can help you get in touch with your uh, underlying motives and, I'll give you a chance to release your thoughts and beliefs around uh, those things. Yeah, so those are the bullets for undoing tips for undoing people pleasing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all in the book. <laughs> yeah. I'll just say share too, because this was really, this is a great chapter. It's so good. We did it, like I said, in, in the house here. And one of the things that's, tied in here um, in this exercise is that it goes through the levels of mind in a way that's not just surface. Okay. You know, what are the feelings? What are the thoughts? What are your beliefs? It actually, in all the exercises really do that on some level, they go through the levels of mind because really that's really all there is, is, is mind and they're all, and, and the layers of mind, which, you know, is involving your perceptions, your emotions, your thoughts, beliefs, and your core desire. And we get right down into the core desire with this chapter, which is amazing. Um, and one of the cool things about this exercise, too, is that, that the last question in the exercise is to actually help you get in touch with the Holy Spirit and release feelings of responsibility because... That's really tied in here, you know, with wanting to be a, a good person, wanting to be liked, um, and all the guilt that can accompany those feelings of responsibility, um, hurting somebody, you know, because you're speaking authentically or something like that. Um, and I found that to be myself, because I, I do these exercises now for myself. I, I go in there and I share about it, and um, but... It's really great to, it's part of undoing people pleasing as I'm doing these exercises. And, and of course, it's about the joining and, and about having opportunities to share our experience and to express and to um, really just open up to each other. Um, but my primary motivation now is to go in and do this exercise. And I want an, ex, an, an experience, you know, and so it's working out really well for me. So. And I think for everyone, as I'm hearing. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, well, I just had one last question coming to mind. Practically, as I and everybody else starts to really apply this to their daily life, and that's, okay, so I'm going to start speaking more truthfully about what's actually happening in my experience. What, hmm. Better question. I was going to say, what can I expect? But um, what do I do if the reflections I get back aren't encouraging and supportive of my new authenticity? <laughs> well, I think most, 
most likely you will, they will disappear pretty quickly. <laughs> the people that are not, that don't like your new attitude. <laughs> <laughs> and the people who do like your new attitude, they will flock around you because mm. they will feel the authenticity and they feel they can be authentic. Mm. So it's really just embracing That's that reflection. Really, I was going to say it's a really great question because, you know, just I think going deeper, just being here in Camus, that we're talking about this whole book, a relationship with the Holy Spirit. So I think that kind of cuts it right down. And I said, it's trust before, but um, yeah, in, in some ways I, I feel in, at least in my own journey that, that, you know, the outer world has to kind of disappear and, and more and more we need to feel that experience of, of, okay, well, the outer doesn't matter and the, and, and the spirit and feel, feel really connected with the spirit. And, and the book kind of, speaks to that directly so much and because that's really david's teachings you know that's what david has shared and actually from my experience that's the only thing that really works anyway so yeah so i guess where i was even driving with that is that anything that comes back is still just for the healing of your mind is still just encouragement to keep going as the as the reflections of doubt drop away it's like you actually have the ones around you seemingly that can be mighty companions and supportive of you continuing to, mm. as you said, deepen in relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, and ultimately you, you stop caring really about people. Like the experience of the abstract spirit becomes so great that you, you have no people thoughts. You don't have people pleasing, but you don't have people thoughts about yourself or others. It's like a new world, a new level. Mm. Like the two thought systems that don't go together, you have moved from the, the lower ego thought system to the spirit's thought system, which is like no form. It's, it's beingness. So this is, this is the dismantling of the entire ego thought system. Yes. The undoing of people pleasing. The quick it's, way. Oh, yeah. Practical, uh, practical. way. Yeah. <laughs> Very practical. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Well, I did want to share... Um, practically. The way that you can find this book now is um, it's available for pre-order. It's coming out in February, so you can actually hold the copy in your hands in February, but it is available for pre-order now, and through the next little while we've got some uh, gifts, basically, that if you want to order one copy for yourself, you get a series of gifts. This is also a fantastic book for study groups, so as Greg was just sharing, there's experiential exercises in this and that they're doing them in chemist there and just having miracles. So bring this book into your study groups if you want to go deeper with your mighty companions there and do the exercises together and practice with one another so you have the context in this safe space of let's start practicing no people pleasing together. So yeah, maybe Jenny or Greg, you can just share with us a little bit more about these gifts that are available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we, we have this inspiration to share this book really, really wide, widely. And um, we have the feeling that this book actually has the potential to become a bestseller, New York Times bestseller. And to support that process, we, um, you know, people love gifts, people love Christmas gifts and any type of gifts that come for free. And so uh, we want to give right now. We, so out of proportion, actually, <laughs> these gifts that we offer. If, if you order um, a book or three books or 10 books or however many books you want to, you may have a, a big friendship that are into spirituality. You want to gift them books by as many as you want and the more gifts you will get. And mm -hmm. these gifts are for your mind training. The gifts we offer, you can see it on the website. It's, um, it can be shared in the chat probably yeah absolutely yeah and um so if you for example buy three books you get gifts for that's worth more than 200 dollars <laughs> out of our um, offerings like it's the movie watchers guide uh, to enlightenment subscription the master subscription where you get everything that we offer in the movie watchers guide uh, where you can go in and um, search for topics that you're going through 
could be people pleasing, it could be shame and many different things that you want to, you know, heal in your own mind and the movie Watcher's Guide can be used for that. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the gifts. We offer the doorway, trust and inspiration. We offer, um, yeah, we offer a book excerpt, a book exercise, uh, just to get a taste of the book. And yeah, that's yeah. some of them. Yeah, in the online retreat as well. Um, so next week exactly. we have an online retreat. Uh, instead of our shows, we've got um, the birth of holiness, the time of Christ has come. So that's going to be available too for, uh, I'm looking at it here on my, my screen, that's going to be available for um, anything more than three books. So yeah, it just feels like this is, this is the perfect time to really uh, strengthen your, mm -hmm. your practice with mind training and... Um, these books are, are here to come support that, whether you've got it in your hands in February or you're able to take advantage of these things right now. It just feels like a really good time to, to dive deeper. Yeah. yeah, if you want to gift your friends with a book, you know, at Christmas, you can buy a little card where you say, this moment, this miracle will be yours in February, you know, something like that. And um, the way you go about it, you order the book, um, pay for them, um, possibly through um, an online retailer and then you upload your receipt to us and then we will send you an email and give you all those things. Mm. And all of that information will appear in the chat. Yeah. Well, I, I think we're wrapping up here. Greg, do you have any, anything to share? Yeah, I could just give it a little bit more specific that um, if you order three books, you get uh, three months worth of the Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment online. So you have access to all the movies and all the teachings uh, right there. Um, you get to participate in an online weekend retreat for free. And you also get David's audio book, um, The First 25 Lessons of A Course in Miracles, um, sent to you uh, and downloaded, downloadable for you. So yeah, it's Christmas time coming up. You get three books, and I know as a, I was st I stopped giving Christmas gifts a long time ago. But when the Chorus of Miracles came in, I did, you know, that was one of the things that I felt to gift people, you know, and so that was, and it always felt really good. And I was gifted, you know, with the book. I was gifted different um, introductions to a Course of Miracles. So um, yeah, it just feels very natural to be able to offer. Um, this is in and, and and your groups yeah get your groups involved that would be beautiful and i know there's going to be many study groups you know that'll evolve um, develop from reading this book and studying it so yeah it's just enjoy the gifts that's i mean it's feels amazing yeah, and as, as Greg and Jenny were saying, all of this information is available on the website. And actually, I encourage you to just take a look at the website. It's davidhoffmeister.com, and it's gotten a facelift. So it's, it's, it's an experience now when you go there. So explore. You'll find these gifts here, as well as instructions on how to, um, how to pre-order your copy, where you can pre-order your copy, and then um, receiving the gifts. And, mm -hmm. and just a note about the, um, the audiobook. Uh, with the Course in Miracles lessons 1 through 25, that's a fantastic way to start your new year. So, um, yeah, really it's just chock full right now. All of, all of the gifts are raining down. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you, Jenny, and thank mm -hmm. you, Greg. I think we're about finished here for today. But, um, yeah, just stay on the lookout for more information about uh, This Moment Is Your Miracle on Facebook, on Instagram, a number of different places. Check out the new website. It's just, yeah, it's, it's really swirling here and we'll be landing soon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.